The book of Revelation can be a very difficult book to interpret, so much so that many Christians have basically made up their mind that they are not going to go anywhere near this book. Well, in this video, I want to break down some of the signs and symbols in the book of Revelation that will hopefully make it just a little bit easier for you to understand. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you wanna know the entire story of the Bible, I've got a free ebook for you. Click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so here are five categories of signs and symbols in the book of Revelation that will hopefully make it easier for you to understand. And by the way, this list is by no means exhaustive, but it should get you started in the right direction. Category number one is numbers. And so the first number is the number seven, and this number represents completion or perfection. And we can see this if we go all the way back to creation, how it took God seven days to create everything. That was his completion or him saying, this creation is perfect. And so whenever we come to the book of Revelation and we see things like seven seal judgments or seven trumpet judgments or seven bowl judgments, these could be seven literal judgments or it could just represent the completion or the perfection of God judging sinful humanity. Not not only that, later on, whenever we see Jesus referring to or rather being described as having seven eyes, that just simply means that he has uh, complete and total and perfect knowledge. So the number seven simply is God's number, which represents completion or perfection. Now, the number six in scripture and also in the book of Revelation represents imperfection. So if seven represents perfection, one less than that represents imperfection. Now, along those same lines, the number three represents fullness or wholeness. Now we know that we serve a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so for this reason, whenever we see oftentimes angels crying out to God or surrounding his throne crying, holy, 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 they are referring to the fullness and the, the totality and the unity of the deity of Christ. So if you combine this idea of three being unity or wholeness or the fullness, and then looking at man's number, which is the number six, which represents imperfection. Whenever we see the number 666, whatever it represents, it represents the fullness and the totality and the wholeness of imperfection, which obviously is motivated by Satan himself. Now, there are other significant numbers such as four or 12 or even larger numbers like a thousand, but we won't go into all of those in this video. Now, the second category that we're gonna look at are colors. Now, colors are very, very prominent in the book of Revelation, and we'll start with the color white. Well, white typically represents purity. And so whenever we see this rider on a white horse in Revelation chapter six, you may think at first glance that's Jesus, but we understand looking at the context that this represents the entrance of this figure in the book of Revelation who is referred to as the Antichrist. And we know that he comes at the beginning of the tribulation period trying to deceive people to represent peace or perfection or uh, purity, if you will. But later on in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, we see another rider on the white horse, but this time, this isn't somebody who was trying to portray or trying to deceive people into being pure. No, this is Christ himself, who is the epitome of purity and peace. Now, the next color that we'll take a look at is the color red. So in the tribulation period, whenever we see a red horse going forth, we understand that to represent bloodshed or warfare or a lack of peace. But later on in the book of Revelation, we see Jesus having red stained garments, which now is a representation of him being victorious as he tramples over his enemies and the blood is shed, representing his complete and total victory and triumph. 
Now, the next color that we will take a look at is the color purple. Now, purple, interestingly enough, was one of the most expensive dyes in the ancient world. And so purple came to be known to represent wealth or status, if you will. And so in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, whenever we see a harlot that is dressed in purple, then we understand, and we'll get to the harlot in just a little bit, we understand that this is a combination of sinfulness, hence the word harlot, and and wealthiness. And so uh, we'll talk about a little bit later about what that means. But whenever you put these two together, we can very clearly see that these are just symbols representing something greater. So once again, there are other colors like black and green that have some sort of symbolism, but we will not go into those in this video. Now, the third category that we'll take a look at are names. And so all throughout the book of Revelation, there are different names that we see thrown out here and there. And if we're not sure what these names mean, it could confuse us quite a bit. So the first name would be Alpha and Omega. Now, Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. And so whenever Jesus is referred to as the Alpha and the Omega, it is representing his eternal existence from eternity past, extending all the way through eternity future. Now, the next name we'll take a look at is one that is heavily debated, and that is Babylon. Now, many scholars believe that Babylon represents the Roman Empire in terms of its sinfulness and wealthiness and all sorts of other contextual clues. But once again, this is highly debated, and so therefore we will leave it there. The third name that we see in the book of Revelation is the bride or the bride of Christ. And looking at other scriptures in the New Testament, we understand that to be the church. That's you and I. But you may think, wait a second, the bride is a female and I'm a man, right? So how can I be part of the bride of Christ? Well, we have to understand that that word bride is nothing more than a symbol. It's a symbol for uh, Christ being in intimate covenant fellowship with a group of people. And so it's not necessarily gender specific, but more so representing the intimate covenant relationship that Jesus has with a group of people, i.e. the church. And then another name that we see in the book of Revelation that is symbolic of something else is the name Jezebel. So in Revelation chapter two, verse 20, we see Jezebel, and we also understand this to be a reference to uh, a Queen Jezebel in the Old Testament who was married to King Ahab. And so Jezebel is synonymous with complete and utter disobedience and rebellion. And so whenever you see the word Jezebel in scripture, that is what it is symbolizing. The fourth category that we see in terms of symbolism in the book of Revelation are things. Now I'm gonna run through this list very quickly. Whenever we see a robe, that oftentimes represents a priesthood. Crowns represent royalty or power or victory. A trumpet represents a message or calling people to attention or an alarm. Eyes represent knowledge or wisdom. Horns represent strength and power. And finally, a lampstand represents the church, which is supposed to be a light in the midst of a dark, crooked and perverse world. Now, once again, there are all sorts of other things that are symbols in the book of Revelation, but we will leave it here for this video. And then the fifth and final category that we'll take a look at in this video are living things. So for instance, whenever Jesus is referred to as a lamb in Revelation 5, 6, we understand that to represent his peaceful or docile nature, and it represents his willingness and his submission to accept him being the sacrifice for our sins. But also in the verse before that, in Revelation 5, 5, we see Jesus referred to as a lion. And so we understand now that this living creature is not docile, is not peaceful, but a lion is vicious and ferocious, and it represents Jesus in in terms of his conquering nature. It represents his strength and his power and his authority as this time on his second coming, he's not coming to be destroyed, if you will, or to be crucified. He is now coming back to demonstrate destruction and power and authority. Obviously the dragon represents Satan, 
Horses represent military strength or speed. Angels are messengers of God. And so whenever we look at an angel from this particular church in Revelation chapter two and three, that's more than likely not necessarily a heavenly angel, but rather a, a leader or a bishop or a pastor or some sort of spiritual overseer of that church who is a messenger of God to the people. Whenever we see this idea of the beast throughout the book of Revelation, that is oftentimes a reference to the Antichrist. And then finally, as I mentioned before, this idea of the harlot represents a sinful empire. And so whenever we look at this harlot in the book of Revelation chapter 17, verse 18, that is why many scholars believe that it is the Roman empire, which at this time would be very wealthy, but also very sinful. So once again, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but as you go through the book of Revelation, hopefully you'll start to notice certain signs and symbols, and you'll understand that many of the things that we see in the book of Revelation should be taken literally, but there are some things that are merely a symbol or a sign to represent and mean something different than what it says. So hopefully this helped you. If you want me to do more of these end time videos, or you want me to make me make another list of these signs and symbols and go a little bit deeper, let me know in the comment section below and I will create that video in the future. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so, I would love it if you subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.